Hey, it's Mike here, and today the ultimate gut microbiome showdown. Yes, a recent study mapped the gut microbiome of 20,000 people. It was vegans, vegetarians, which I probably couldn't fit in the title, as well as meat eaters. And we get to see what bacteria each group had, what diseases those are associated with, and on and on. So uh, the question is, do you have the guts? to watch this whole video. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that you do have a gut, so you should know about this information. Let's go. <laughs> Here's the study from the journal Nature Microbiology, and it was published in 2025, which is just still blowing my mind. Whole new year. They say, quote, in total 656 vegans, 1,088 vegetarians, and 19,817 omnivores were sampled. So yeah, they have over 20,000 samples from five different cohorts, five different groups of people here. And they also came up with what could soon be the ultimate vegan test, see if people are really vegan. And that is really that they looked at the animal DNA content of their poop, like what animal DNA did they eat and then have that make it through the digestive system, what fragments are left over. However, they say this tool is still new and needs to be refined, but you know, in the near future, you could maybe just swab some poop, see if, see if someone's really vegan. Like they could have tried that on Elizabeth Holmes, that whole con artist woman with that health company who claimed to also be vegan, but was very, very likely lying. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the main findings and it shows that there are very different signatures between meat eaters and vegans, especially saying, quote, Red meat was a strong driver of omnivore microbiomes with corresponding signature microbes negatively correlated with host cardiometabolic health. Conversely, vegan signature microbes were correlated with favorable cardiometabolic markers and were enriched in omnivores consuming more plant-based foods. So the omnivores who actually ate plants had some of these as well. And then they went ahead and really just made a score for cardiometabolic health index for these different groups, the vegan, the vegetarian, and the meat eaters. And they say, quote, signatures of omnivore microbiomes were statistically less favorable with ranks in the mid 0.5s when compared to vegetarians ranked at 0.44 and vegans ranked at 0.38. And this is golf score, lower the better. So in that sense, the vegans had the healthiest gut. I would have also loved to see sort of a pathogen score because we've seen previous studies like this one mentioning that vegans have a lower level of potentially pathogenic bacteria when meat eaters have a higher level, but there's a lot more detail than that. So we should look through each group and what types of bacteria were higher or lower and what they do, what disease correlation, what healthy correlation they have, we can start off with these meat people. We have three that we're gonna get into. One that does protein fermentation that I covered in my last videos, which is Allostypes putridinus, as well as Bilophila wadsworthia, which is a bile acid related one, which we'll cover. And finally, we have Ruminococcus torx, all of which are linked to inflammatory bowel disease, ouch. It includes Crohn's as well as ulcerative colitis, obviously things that you don't wanna have, and, and no one's immune to getting them on any diet, but obviously would be an increased risk having higher levels of these. And we can move on to that first bacteria that was higher, that Allostypes putridinus. Yes, putrid is referring to you know putrefaction, rotten stuff, in this case, rotten meat, literally digesting protein in the human colon, which is not supposed to happen. We're supposed to do that in our stomach. However, it makes it past our small intestine and into our large intestine in some cases where those meat proteins can and be fermented and create compounds we don't want, like ammonia or hydrogen sulfide, and those can lead to oxidative stress, damage of the gut wall lining, DNA damage and mutations, which of course, it's connected to colorectal cancer. Do I need to mention that red and processed meat are considered carcinogens in terms of colorectal cancer, according to the WHO? Just had to say it. Oh, this always reminds me of the John Mayer song, Your Body is a Wonderland, but in this case, it would be, your body is a graveyard. Anyway, I also spoke about this bacteria in this study briefly in my recent What I've Learned response video with him talking about how a carnivore diet is great. You can check that out. If you haven't seen it already, I'll link it below. But let's get on to the next one, which is that Bilophila woodsworthia. As you can tell, we have the term bile hiding in there. So it's a bile related bacteria, but it is also another bacteria that can create that hydrogen sulfide, not good. Now, levels of this bacteria are higher in people with colorectal cancer. And then we also have, you know, unfortunately it's a 2020 mouse study, but it did feed 
mice a diet high in milk fat and found that increased Bilophila wadsworthia, leading to colitis-like symptoms in these genetically susceptible mice. And yeah, wadsworthia can promote inflammatory cytokines. It can promote TNF-alpha as well as interleukin-6. So we have a strong case for that intestinal inflammation. Anyway, moving on to the third bacteria here, we're talking about Ruminococcus torx. And this is one that can do damage to the lining of the gut affect intestinal barrier permeability, colloquially known as leaky gut. You don't want things to get through there. You know, this ruminococcus species is correlated, connected with inflammation, as well as seen in higher levels in people with Crohn's disease, etc. For whatever reason, it's also increased in the guts of people with autism that have digestive issues as well. Yeah, they say these three species are implicated in, yeah, inflammatory diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, colorectal cancer, and an overall decrease in short-chain fatty acids acids and were more likely to be associated with negative cardiometabolic health outcomes. And short chain fatty acids are really beneficial byproducts of bacteria that we will get to in a second. But there was another bacteria in those meat eaters that was kind of interesting. And that was Candidatus avimicrobium secorum, which, uh, yeah, I think I just summoned like a bunch of chicken poop because yes, this is a chicken poop bacteria, which they found here. It's in the gut of poultry. And there's not a lot of research on health effects here. It's just lacking. So we don't know, having an unknown uh, chicken fecal bacteria in there, just like how there's generally higher levels of E. coli in people that eat meat than vegans. It's, it's not a good thing to see. And then we can get to the vegan bacterial profile here. And by no surprise, we have several species here that are specialized in fiber degradation, as well as the creation of butyrate, which is that really beneficial short chain fatty acid. There are several of them. And there are so many benefits of butyrate, but one thing it does is it protects the wall of your gut. It promotes the creation of mucins, which are these sort of mucus compounds that help with the lining, as well as tight junction proteins to help the lining stay together. And so in many ways, it's the opposite. It helps prevent that leaky gut, and then it also helps downregulate inflammatory proteins, the same ones, TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. Another difference in vegans is that they found some more soil bacteria. I assume it's from, you know, more root vegetables vegetables and produce, etc. And I will say just a point against the vegans that while there don't seem to be issues from these, they are in some cases potentially pathogenic. And another interesting thing is they sort of had a model that predicted what diet people were eating based off you know, what type of microbiome they had and then how different the groups were. And in terms of group difference, it's interesting to note that the difference between vegans and vegetarians was a bit larger than the difference between vegetarians and meat eaters. And this kind of makes sense because in a lot of ways, dairy is just liquid meat or in the case of cheese, like reconstituted <laughs> liquid meat. Like there's high levels of animal fat, etc., animal proteins in the vegetarian diet as well. So that makes sense. And another interesting point to make is just that we're talking about cardiometabolic issues here and we're also talking about a bile loving bacteria and it is the case that bile acids that we create are to digest fat and so having a higher fat diet massively increases the amount of bile acids like you take somebody from rural africa and compare them to african americans african americans have seven times the level of bile acid and this is important because in the gut bile acid essentially is recycled as cholesterol unless you have fiber to remove it from your system so there's sort of a one-two punch here of having higher bile acids which can create more cholesterol but also not having the fiber to remove it but in the vegans we see less bile acid loving bacteria as well as more fiber loving bacteria showing a clear picture of why, for example, vegans average with like ideal levels of LDL cholesterol, that bad cholesterol when meat eaters don't. So in the end, yeah, I don't think you want to have a lot of like putrefaction bacteria going on in your gut. You don't want to be fermenting proteins. You don't want to be creating hydrogen sulfide from the other bacteria as well. You don't want chicken fecal bacteria in there either. And I will say, well, the study is exhaustive in some ways. They actually didn't look at that many different types of bacteria. I would love to see even more results. You know, again, talking about E. coli, streptococcus, you know, ones that we can even measure on the gut test I've taken in the past. And perhaps the biggest takeaway here is that that cardiometabolic microbiome score was the best for the vegans. It was the lowest in terms of risk. Well, the vegetarians were one step up in terms of risk, and then the meat eaters were the highest. So from your butt and your gut and beyond, 
I don't know what that was. Uh, yeah, eat more plants. It's even helping people who are on an omnivorous diet when they're eating more plants to have more of these beneficial bacteria, lower cardiometabolic risk, and on and on. And yeah, vegans did great. So feel free to let me know down below what you think about all this. I am currently in Costa Rica on one of my vegan group trips. So this video is gonna be a little bit shorter than the normal ones. I'm probably rafting, zip lining, or sloth sleuthing right now. <laughs> but yeah, if you have an interest in future trips, of course you could click the link below and get on that list to be notified. You know, I'm thinking about maybe doing a Greece trip in the near future, we'll see. You know, if you hopped into the study, which is free to look at and had any more observations, let us know. And feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.